Okay, welcome back. I hope you guys had a good spring break. Uh, for the rest of the semester, we are going to be focusing on perspective drawings. Um, I have teamed up with Professor Hughes. We're going to be working together to, to teach you perspective drawings, uh, which means students from his section are also going to be using these tutorials. Um, obviously, there are probably going to be ways in which we differ in terms of the approach, um, and so uh, in order to get clarification about what you're meant to do, depending on what section you're in, um, you will receive emails from your individual instructor. Uh, either um, I or Professor Hughes will email our own sections and let them know exactly how to proceed. I'm going to try to keep these tutorials as simple and straightforward as possible so they really work for both sections. Um, and hopefully, as we move forward, this will work out. So, this first tutorial is just simply um, looking at the different views that you might have with perspectives and going over some basic language, uh, some terminology for the perspectives. <clears throat> I'm going to show you both uh, the eye level view, which is what this is, um, the bird's eye view, and the worm's eye view. Uh, although we won't really be working with worm's eye view this semester, uh, we wanted to introduce you to it. Um, I've set up a few drawings um, in the same way, so that on the left side of the drawing, um, you have a plan as if you're looking at it from above, um, so you can see the relationship between where your eye view is and the objects that you're viewing towards the horizon. And I've set up a perspective that corresponds to that plan. Okay, in the eye view, the way that it works is that you can see there's always a horizon line, which uh, is that flat line. Uh, if you're standing at the ocean uh, where everything kind of disappears, and you, you all know what that is. Um, where that is in relationship to the page uh, will depend on the drawings uh, that you're doing. We'll talk about that in future tutorials. Okay? And then we also have a ground line, which uh, serves to give a base to whatever the object of your drawing happens to be. In this case, it's a wireframe box. You can see it here. Um, we're going to talk about why that ground line, uh, that ground line's relationship to the horizon line is important. You can see here there's an important distance of that ground line from the horizon line. Uh, we're also going to talk about station point. Uh, the station point is where you happen to be. You can imagine it is where you're viewing this drawing from. Your eye uh, view is really the station point. Um, the closer you place that station point or the further away you place that station point to the object of your drawing uh, will change how large that drawing is on the page or how much of it, uh, how close you are to it or how far away. Um, so if that station point moves closer here, you can see that this might actually become closer or bigger on the page and make you feel like you're closer to the thing. If I move my station, my station point back, you can see that this might diminish uh, towards the horizon and get smaller, not that complicated. And then we're going to talk about center of view, um, and we're going to uh, talk about that because it's going to become important in the, the first uh, assignment that we give you this week, One Point Perspectives. In this case, the center of view is also the center of the object. It's just um, sort of coincidental at this point. I'm going to show you the next two drawings that actually move that center of view. The center of view is relative to the station point, the viewer, uh, not necessarily the object. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And you can see here we've got this wireframe box. Um, you're standing back here at a certain distance. And we've got another person to the right here for a reason I want to correspond that to the perspective and talk about that, that ground line and why that's important. All right, so if I'm standing here in my station point and I'm viewing out, right, I've got a cone of vision and I see everything in that cone of vision, uh, we're not going to necessarily talk about the mathematics of that today, but you can imagine I see all that. So here in the perspective, I'm, I'm back uh, where my eyes are and I can see this thing in the distance some distance. This is not the scale. Uh, our assignment will be scaled. We'll talk about that in a future tutorial. But I can also see this person standing here. Uh, the important part about the distance of the ground line relative to the object is that we want to feel like we are viewing this thing at our own eye level. Uh, now, for most people, probably the average eye level is about five feet, but we're on the metric system, and so to keep things easy, I'm going to make that about two meters. So this is a fairly tall person. Um, but 
doing it at two meters will make it easy for us to get through these tutorials and these drawings, but it will also make you feel as if um, you're at eye level with the object that you're viewing. So you can imagine if this is two meters from the ground uh, to that person's eyes, the same is true for your eyes at the station point. You're viewing this thing from two meters above the ground as well. The ground continues out and you're standing up seeing it at the same perspective point. Okay, and so the bulk of the object or in the future tutorial, the building will be above the horizon and less of it will be below the horizon. We wanna make sure that whatever scale we're using, we're thinking about that eye level uh, being uh, the same distance from the ground line uh, as it would be in, in life, okay? All right, the worms or the bird's eye view, I'm sorry. Again, we've got it set up so we've got the plan here and we've got the perspective on the right. Um, if you look at the plan, you can see that there's an object out to my left here. And so you can see my center of view here is to the right of the object. So I can still see this in my cone of vision, but I'm gonna see it off to the left. And so it will diminish towards the horizon, towards the vanishing point, which is essentially the same as my uh, center of view. So when I move to my perspective, you can see that my center of view point actually is the same location relatively as my vanishing point. I'm going to show you in a future tutorial how they are actually the same point really, but just to understand how to set this drawing up, I've got the bird here and it has a center of view towards the horizon and this object off to the left. And so if we look at the bird's eye view, uh, we've got the horizon line, we've got the vanishing point, and I am above that object. So that object is going to be positioned below the horizon. None of that object is gonna be above the horizon because I'm above the ground, I'm floating above this object. And so that way now I can see the top surface of that object. If I was flying over a building, um, you know, in a town somewhere, and so that's the advantage of the bird's eye view, and you can kind of see how that all works. Uh, same terminology applies to this, and you can see we've just shifted out to the right with the center of view, so now this perspective is sort of at an oblique angle, but everything here um, diminishes to this vanishing point. All right, the worm's eye view, similar to the bird's eye view, it's just uh, basically the opposite, except for the fact that in this case, we're gonna be talking about being underground, which a lot of people uh, don't, don't tend to get, but we'll talk about that in a second. So the plan of this again, um, the worm, which is under the ground in this case, um, is off to the left with the center of view, off to the left of the object, um, and so, the cone of vision will pull that object in the same way that I've done here. Now, a lot of people will think that um, this object is floating, but it's not. If you notice, the ground line is here. So you gotta imagine that there's some kind of a plane of ground, and I'm actually underneath that plane of ground, uh, like a worm would be looking up. Now, in some cases, there are reasons why this will be an effective drawing to make. Uh, depends on the kind of thing that you're designing. We're not necessarily going to work with this, uh, this semester uh, but we wanted you to be familiar with it. All right, now we're gonna move um, through one point and two point perspectives this semester. The ones I've just showed you are one point perspectives. And all the faces that are um, parallel uh, with the horizon line, uh, you can see are, are sort of flat and parallel to our view. And all the, um, all the faces that are perpendicular to that horizon lines are the ones that are going to be at that oblique angle vanishing uh, towards the vanishing point or diminishing towards the vanishing point. Uh, that's the difference between the one and the two point perspective is that all these faces that we view, um, these faces appear flat and regular to us. Um, it's not necessarily how we see things in real life, which is why the two point perspective, I think, is a better way to visualize architecture, but we'll get to that um, in, a, in a week, week and a half. 